Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Understanding Linear Power Supplies. In this presentation, we'll provide a brief technical introduction to so-called linear power supplies and how they convert alternating current into direct current. Let's start by explaining what we mean by a power supply. Electrical mains power, that is the power present at standard electrical outlets, is delivered as high voltage alternating current. High voltage here means between 100 and 240 volts. On the other hand, almost all electronic devices require low voltage direct current for their internal operation. This low voltage is typically dozens of volts or less. Sometimes this low voltage DC can be provided by batteries, and battery power has become increasingly common for many consumer electronic devices. However, there are still many cases where battery power is not practical, and it's also worth noting that the batteries themselves are charged using DC. In this presentation, we'll use the term power supply to refer to a device that converts high voltage AC mains voltage into one or more stable, low voltage DC outputs. Another way of saying this is that a power supply takes an electrical sine wave and, ideally, produces a straight line output. Power supplies can be broadly divided into two general categories, linear power supplies and switching mode power supplies. This presentation covers the basic design and operation of linear power supplies. A linear power supply consists of four stages. The first is a transformer that converts the AC mains input into lower voltage AC. This lower voltage AC is then rectified using diodes and filtered to produce an approximately constant voltage. Many linear power supplies also include a regulator to help maintain constant output under changing load conditions. Next we'll go through each of these steps and explain in more detail how they're used to convert AC into DC. Mains voltage is usually much too high for most electronic applications. Depending on geography, standard AC mains voltage is between 100 and 240 volts, whereas most electronic applications require voltages of 12 volts or less. Therefore, the first stage in a linear power supply is a transformer, which converts or steps down the AC mains voltage to lower voltage AC. The ratio of the number of windings or turns on each side of the transformer determines how much the voltage is stepped down. This step down voltage is still AC, so the next step is rectifying this waveform using diodes, which are components that only pass current in one direction. A single diode can act as a half-wave rectifier that essentially removes or cuts off the negative portion of a waveform. But linear power supplies normally use a full-wave rectifier that inverts the negative portion of the waveform and thus effectively produces its absolute value. There are different ways of implementing a full-wave rectifier, such as center tapping a transformer and using only a pair of diodes, but the four-diode bridge rectifier, shown in this illustration, is the more common approach in linear power supplies, in part because the two extra diodes in a bridge rectifier tend to be cheaper than using a center tap transformer. The output of a rectifier is a pulsing or pulsating voltage, so filtering is used to convert this pulsating input into a mostly straight line. This filtering is done using one or more capacitors, sometimes in combination with an inductor. Capacitors charge as input voltage increases and discharge when voltage decreases, so they can fill in the voltage between the peaks of the pulsating waveform. The larger the capacitor, the longer the period of time over which it can provide this smoothing voltage. Note, however, that even after filtering, some amount of ripple may still be present on the nominally DC or straight line output. At this point, we have what's sometimes called an unregulated linear power supply. The DC output voltage of a supply is, to some extent, also dependent on the input voltage and especially on the load impedance. If the load impedance is high, and or if we're using a smaller filter capacitor, this can lead to significant variation in the supply's output voltage, since in both cases the capacitor will discharge more quickly. Therefore, 
regulation is often added to power supplies in order to help keep output voltage constant in the face of changing input voltage or load impedance. This voltage regulator is usually implemented as a feedback loop, consisting of a transistor and an op-amp, and is most often packaged as a single integrated circuit, with leads for voltage in, voltage out, and ground. So let's review the stages in our linear power supply. The high voltage mains AC is stepped down to a lower voltage AC using a transformer, and is then rectified to produce a pulsating positive voltage. A capacitor-based filter then smooths out this pulsating voltage to produce a mostly flat DC voltage. Optionally, a regulator can be used to keep the output voltage level constant when the input voltage or the load impedance changes. Before we end this presentation, let's also spend a few moments talking about the advantages and disadvantages of linear power supplies. Linear power supplies are generally inexpensive, simple, and durable. They also produce a relatively clean output. That is, the output DC voltage has low ripple and low noise. From an EMC perspective, linear power supplies also produce low levels of both conducted and radiated emissions. On the other hand, these types of power supplies also tend to be both large and heavy, primarily due to the size of the transformer and filter capacitors. Linear power supplies are also somewhat inflexible with regards to operating at different input and output voltages. In addition, linear power supplies can be inefficient, especially at higher output powers. For applications where these disadvantages outweigh the advantages, so-called switching mode power supplies are often used instead of linear power supplies. Please see the separate presentation on switching mode power supplies if you'd like to learn more about this other category of power supplies. Let's end with a brief summary. Linear power supplies are used to convert higher voltage mains AC to lower voltage DC, typically for use in electronic devices or for charging batteries. In this presentation, we cover the four main sections of a linear power supply. First, a transformer is used to step down the higher voltage input AC to a lower voltage. Next, a diode-based rectifier inverts the negative portion of the input waveform in order to create a pulsed positive output. A filter, consisting of one or more capacitors, is then used to smooth the pulsating rectifier output in order to produce a more or less constant voltage. Finally, an optional regulator section can be used to stabilize the power supply's output voltage when input or load conditions change. Linear power supplies are low cost and robust with a clean output and low emissions, but the size of the transformer and filter capacitors both increase the size of the supply as well as reduce efficiency compared to so-called switching mode power supplies. This concludes our presentation understanding linear power supplies. If you'd like to learn more about power supplies, power integrity, power electronics, or other power-related test and measurement topics, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.